Hey, what's up, guys? Rona Man here. All right, so why the nicest thing you can ever do for your girlfriend is to say no to marriage. All right, so this podcast is uh, episode is based on the research of Bella DiPaolo, and uh, she has a book called Singled Out, came out a few years ago. A very, very interesting woman. I didn't read the book in full, but I watched all of her uh both educational and also TED Talks. I've read the reviews and uh, I haven't had a chance to read the book, but it's one of these cases where she basically lets the cat out of the bag. So I want to break it down for guys. Okay, so everybody knows that society is pretty much dead set on 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 getting everybody married. I mean, it, like, you know, the things you watch, like, like uh, Disney movies, you know, they're, they're basically like, I mean, let's face it, it's the happy ever after. That is the story. And I don't know why it's like this, but for some fucking reason, these, uh, the reviews are talking about the Disney movies. They always talk about how women are duped, you know, by these Disney stories. And, you know, this, uh, this affects them because, you know, they are told that, uh, that they're going to be happy. Uh, and somehow they don't notice, which is, really telling actually that men and boys also watch these same shows you know kids watch disney movies you know and these movies promote this happily ever after now i don't know about you but as 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 a boy i saw these movies i went to disneyland and you know we lived near disneyland i often went to disneyland and there was snow white's castle there was no castle for men you know and i watched the the shows and there was like these well-developed characters that were female we knew all about their feelings how much they cried we knew what they thought we knew about their interpersonal relations like Cinderella we knew about her sisters we knew about her mother you know we knew we knew about her house we knew about her duties we knew about her dreams we knew you know we knew a lot about her actually there was a very in-depth understanding of Cinderella that's why she was so beloved but, but what do we really know about the guys, the counterpart, Prince Charming? They were like the most cut out characters with no meaning. I mean, there was no, nobody even knew who they were. Like, we didn't know what kind of job they had, why they had this horse, you know, why they had these nice clothes. We had no idea. There, we, we, I don't even know if we knew their name. I guess we knew their name. That was about it. Like, the male characters in these Disney movies were pretty much the most flim flam cardboard uh what do you call it like ignored characters in the book everybody else we knew a lot we we even knew more about the evil people you know we we watched them we you know my pretty you know like we knew their mirror we knew all this kind of stuff right we knew their house and their room and you know their their what they were planning and you know the potions they made and this and that I mean, the, 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 the guy on the white horse, he just like rolls in with his horse, big smile, and then that's it. That's all we knew about him, you know? And so either way, that's just my, one of my like really pet peeves. And the reason why I say that, I've said that a couple of times, because I really think it's like a sign of how society does not even see men. You know, the fact that no one mentions the fact that men are cardboard cutouts in stories for children and we don't know what they feel we don't know what they dream of we don't know about their families we pretty much know nothing about these guys and i just think that's just amazing that that is just to me it's just like it's it's astounding that women don't see that because you often hear people complaining especially feminists will say that women are not um they're ignored. Their their feelings are ignored. They're not, you know. But if you watch any Disney movie, uh, any romantic movie, and let's face it, men and women are, you know what I mean? Like it's it's a mutual thing. There should be, there should be something there, but there isn't. There's nothing. There's nothing, and there's no understanding. There's nothing. There's no nothing. Right? There's just ignor- ignoring, and vile accusations. That's the part that gets me. It's okay, being ignored, whatever. Nobody notices, cardboard cutouts, no feelings. Okay, none of this stuff is good. Okay, this is not good stuff. Children, men do not, I mean, it is not 
beneficial to the development of a child to ignore their feelings, to ignore how they, their dreams, I mean, to ignore, these, these are the things that create pathologies and serious issues in adults, right, when this stuff happens in childhood, right? But it's not just that, it's, it's the fact that it's not talked about. That, that part just fucking drives me insane. And, and, you know, it's like, if you do bring it up, if you did bring it up, like, nobody, pretty much nobody cares. Like, it's just, to me, it's just shocking. But either way, so back to the uh, Bella DePaulo's research, is she's single, she's happy single. And so she started to, I mean, she felt the pressure, right? There's a lot of pressure to get married, okay? Like, for example, like, there's over a thousand laws in America, okay? A thousand laws that benefit married people and do not benefit obviously single people basically discriminate against single people a thousand laws okay tax laws this and that but it's not just the laws it's a lot of other stuff too you know uh for example health insurance there's no law but family health insurance is much cheaper than individual health insurance and so that's 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 a huge huge issue because if you don't have health insurance or if you're paying overpaying for health insurance it's discrimination and it's also obviously one of the most important things you know your health is number one right now if you don't have health you can't really work right you can't really love you can't travel you can't enjoy the foods that, you know what i mean like health is just maslow's hierarchy of needs health would be right there right it's like you need that that's the fundamental thing you need. Now, single people are discriminated against when it comes to health. So, okay, so all this stuff happens. So you would think, and also, let's go a little farther. How does society look at marriage and single people? Marriage is a good thing in society's eyes. So when people get married, they have a big party for them. Society encourages uh, kind of the celebration of marriage. Uh, I know as a single guy, I know that society does not celebrate me. Now, it's fine. Okay, I'm just, you know, I'm not, there's no problem. But I'm just saying, like, these are things, these are things that make people somewhat happy. They, 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 they give you, you know, when you, when you, when you have a wedding, right? You, everybody's smiling. Why? Everybody came to celebrate uh, this marriage, right? A single person, they, what did they get? You know, like... I've thought this a million times. Like I've been to a billion weddings in my life and I've given a million crisp or sorry, a wedding presents, but I've never wanted to get married. I've never been married. So there's been no wedding for me, you know? And the thing about weddings is I'm I'm not I like parties, okay? Don't get me wrong, I love cake, I love parties, I like uh, good food, I like laughter, I like music. So I would say yeah, I mean, overall, I probably would say I like weddings. You know, I like to get, I don't, I don't like to give expensive presents to to everybody when I don't get anything back ever, uh, and really not really any thanks either. You know, flying out to different countries to see, to you know, celebrate someone's wedding, and then you just kind of, <laughs> you're just kind of like a side person at the at the thing. You know, okay, fine. Uh, but I, I, you know, theoretically, yeah, it's okay. You know, this is good. I think. I think that uh, single people uh, do have, uh, you know, I, I tell you, here's the thing. Here's the thing about weddings is they bring a lot of people together. Okay, so my grandfather was at my brother's wedding, and there's a lot of pictures of him, right? And my grandfather then died a few years later, right? not that many years later, after that. Luckily, I went to visit him just before he passed away when he was still healthy. I went to Minnesota, and it was it was great. It was absolutely the best decision I ever made. Like I, I love my grandfather and on my mother's side. And I'm so glad I went to see him before he passed away while he was healthy because he got cancer and then it went away. He got, he got over it and I went to visit him. He was healthy. He could walk like five miles a day. And we did, we walked like crazy and then it came back and then, you know, he died. So I was really lucky to be there when he was, uh, you know, he was with it. He wasn't like on a bunch of drugs or, you know, and, but the thing is, the wedding is what brought you know him together, and we got the pictures, and I got to see my grandfather uh, one more time because I was in Japan, right? So I didn't get to see my family like like most people see their family more, you know. I, I didn't really see him that much, but the wedding was the thing that brought everybody together. So I really like that about weddings. I think that's 
I would have to say that I think if you're going to say getting married, what's the biggest benefit is that it brings everybody together and you get to meet a lot of people. That's that is seriously beneficial, like having a single wedding or something like that. You know, one of my friends had a wedding in, in uh, college. Best wedding ever, man. Fuck, it was the best. He he had money. He was a developer and uh, he was young, but he, he was very successful. He's very successful now. And he, he said to everybody, he said, look, basically, we, we all, none of us had any money. I mean, we were earning money, but we we're in college, right? We were just partying. And, you know, this guy said, my friend Lance, he just said, look, everybody come to the wedding. I'm renting like a ton of cabins up in the mountains. It's going to be, we're all going to have a great time. Like, don't even worry about bringing a gift. Just come and just enjoy. And it, it, I paid for everything. Food is there. We're going to barbecue together. You know, it wasn't like some big hand job catering bullshit. It was, it was, it was, it was fun. It was like Brady Bunch, you know, or, you know, Partridge Family kind of 70s thing, right? We all barbecued. There was like, you know, food and their meat and vegetables and mushrooms. I'm oh, sorry, uh, uh, marshmallows and you know everything your coffee everything you'd want and it was great and it was it was not fancy but it was really healthy and really good and we had a great time that that was probably my favorite wedding of my whole life because I didn't feel like he wanted anything from me you know it was just like he wanted me to meet all his friends and he wanted everybody to have a good time and I that that's fucking awesome okay but okay so back to the topic sorry off the topic it's all it's all relevant um okay so Bella basically did, uh, she's, she's happy, okay, she's happy single, she's never been married, and she started to doubt society's kind of brainwashing, really, uh, because here it is, you know, she knows that there's all these benefits for being married, right, like a thousand laws, you know, and there's also things like, even like cell phone data plans, right, you know, m- families get a cheaper price, right, uh, when, when I was home, I, if I'm going to buy my own cell phone in America, it does cost quite a bit of money, my, the service. Whereas if I sign up in someone's f- a family plan, it's like super cheap and there's no commitment, right? So family stuff is cheaper. There are huge benefits for families. No doubt about it. So that would tell you that one thing, what happens when you get a lot of benefits, when you get celebrated, when you save money, when you're more safe, when your health is better, what would happen? The thing would happen would be you'd be happier, right? You'd be like, fuck, this is a better deal. I got a better deal. Well, she went, Bella DePaulo, she went through all the research, over 800 academic studies, anything that mentioned single people, and she was shocked to find out that despite all the advantages for marriage, despite all the legal, social, you know, everything, you know, even like, uh, she didn't even mention it, but you know, you do save money on rent when you have two people together, you know, instead of having two apartments or two houses. So there's all these advantages. You would think like it was like that the happiness uh, of the of the people would be a lot higher for uh, married people. Right. Well, that's not what she found. And her findings, are, they are very, uh, uh, what do you call it? They're not black and white. They're not, they, it's sophisticated. She goes through the graph. You can watch her, her presentation, just in a nutshell, single people are very happy before they're married. And then there's two types of people after they get married, the, the type of people who eventually get divorced and the people that, uh, that don't, that stay married and are happy. And interesting is in the ones that get divorced eventually, uh, it's, it's, it's visible in their rating, their personal ratings of happiness right after marriage. So there's a difference. Okay, so basically you have single people. Imagine the line is happiness is very high. Then they get married. There's a little spike in people that stay married forever. And there's, there's, there's immediately heading down for people that eventually get divorced. So they, it's like people imagine, they, 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 they foresee as soon as they get married, they realize, holy shit, I made a mistake. And then happiness starts dropping. And it keeps dropping for those ones that get divorced. And for the ones that uh, stay married and are, are, you know, quote unquote, happily married, there's a spike at the wedding, there's a spike afterwards, newlyweds, but then it just goes down to basically the same level of happiness as single people, uh, and even a little bit uh, lower. So 
Why would that be? How is that possible? It all makes perfect sense if you think about it. Okay, so what, what really makes you happy? Think about that. Ask yourself. Like, what really makes you happy? Does, does extra money make you happy? Does it really? Does extra, look back at the times you had a certain salary. Let's say you made, you know, 10 bucks an hour. And you got a raise to 11 bucks an hour. Were you, you know, legitimately long-term happier when you made $11 an hour? You know, or were you happier, you know, when you made uh, from, let's say, $80,000 to $85,000? Were you happier? Right? Or did you just buy more things? You know, pretty much, there's a, the, the, the studies of happiness uh, show a couple things. Is the real studies that get into the deep into happiness, there's basically only one finding or two, two essentially two findings. And that is that there's a certain amount of money that you need to eat where you don't feel stressed out. And that's, I think it's about $60,000 per person. But once you get to that level, it doesn't matter what it is. It's like 60, 70, whatever it is. Yeah, I think it's 60, but in the States, and it depends on the PPP, uh, you know, purchasing power parity of your country you're in. But there's a certain amount where you can pay the bills, you can pay for insurance, you can cover emergencies, you have a car. And, 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 and that brings you a significant amount of happiness, okay? Now, less than that, where you're stressed about money, where you're not sure if you can eat, you're not sure if you can pay the rent, that does decrease happiness, okay? And then from $60,000 to net assets of $10 million, there's not that much change. But at $10 million, there is another level of happiness. So essentially the way they broke it down, the happiness research I've read, I've read a lot, uh, a lot of books too, is that what they break it down is that 95% of the happiness comes from $60,000 a year and getting out of the scarcity. And the last 5% comes from $10 million or more, okay? Having that in assets. Because there must be some kind of security you get from that extra money where you realize, hey, I'm set for life. You know, and that gives you that extra 5% of happiness. 95 for the 60, an extra 5% for 10 million. So happiness is not directly tied to money. In every research, there's no research that says, you know, in the middle, there's like this much, this much, it goes, keeps going up. It's not true. It's like out of scarcity, I'm not worried. And there's, I never have to work again, right? I'm set. You know, my kids are set. That, that gives a certain happy. So that's it. Okay. But 99% or 95%, sorry, is just basically being able to cover your bills and not being stressed. Well, you can just live your life, right? So why would single people be happier than married people if there's, you know, there's, there's all these advantages uh, to being married? Well, basically it goes down to, it's, it's really easy to understand. Okay, so it's easy to understand because you just have to think about your life. Okay, so... Oh, oh they, they, actually, there's more research. Okay, let me, let me tell you this. So when they, when they ask uh, single people uh, what jobs they chose or why they chose their jobs, uh, they said it's because it had meaning for them. So they wanted to do this job. So maybe they're a social worker, maybe they're a writer, maybe they're, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're doing emergency tech technician, whatever it is that they... Uh, uh, medical tech technician, what, whatever it is that, you know, they, they found that uh, single people gravitate, and this is like statistically accurate, there was 800 statistical, uh, sorry, uh, uh, studies that she, academic studies that she, she drew on, in addition to her own research, because uh, she was a college professor who did research, and took a sabbatical and research during that period, uh, and, 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 and they found that, um, Oh, geez, I lost my train of thought there. Uh, geez, I totally lost my train of thought. Okay. Uh, right. So where are we time-wise? Where are we time-wise? So what they found was, is that single people had more control uh, of their own choices. And they were, and they used that control. Okay, this was the interesting thing. Because the, 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 narr the narrative is that single people are selfish, right? But actually, what they found was that single people used that control to do things that were meaningful. So 
they didn't have to earn, so they chose things that they wanted to do. Now, this is sliding scale, depends on the person, but that's basically what they found. And so single people were more likely to take something, uh, either a, a job or start a company, where they felt there was meaning. There was meaning for it, right? Whereas like married people in the research, and this is very clear, and, and this happens as soon as they get married, that their, their perspective changes, where they choose jobs for higher pay and higher benefits, regardless of how they feel about it. Now, that's as soon as they get married. As soon as they get married, they start thinking this way. And I think guys more than women. Guys, if you ask any, I can tell you this, from my married friends, and even from my own parents, you know, I could see a big difference is women choosing things they want to do, men having to earn money. And so men especially, and this is what she didn't get into specific uh, gender differences in this one, but I can tell you, I don't know where you guys, planet you guys are on, but the one I live on, married guys immediately stop thinking about their dreams when they get married. They start to earn money. And, and, and they... they I guess the compensation or the kind of society says is that you will now, you know, be happy with your, your, your marriage, your family life. This is your dream. So your job is like, whatever, you know, whatever. And, but long term, this has a huge effect on guys' happiness, huge effect. And women too, women who choose also higher pay, higher money over their uh, dreams and wants and you know what I mean desires right it has a huge effect long term because this is what you do every day right so that's one thing so I can tell you my own experience and this is going to be very interesting I, I, my, my experience when it comes to this one is is, 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 is is I think it's very instructive okay so you know like I said I'm, everybody knows I'm 54 years old I've started many companies and I've dated a lot of different women. Now, what that allowed me to do is have different women from different countries, different ages, different, you know what I mean, different nationalities, uh, in different periods of my life, during different periods of my life, when, if you look at my life, it's just a blip of me starting companies, because I never was an employee. So I've always started companies. So I've had the, I've had the, what is it, the fortune of being able to see what it's like when I start a company, okay, so I have something secure, usually. Now, the secure could be, in many times in my life, it would be like I had a company that was making tons of money. And then I would say to myself, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to do something new, and here's what I want to do. And I would be dating a girl at the time. And this is what, I tell you, I was so disappointed in this. I, women really disappointed me on this one. I, I got to tell you. Because what I found over and over, and, and this is with different ages and different nationalities and, you know, different, uh, you know, uh, wealthy and poor and everything. I found that women do not, and, and you guys that are entrepreneurs, you tell me what you think, but they, women do not like guys who start companies. They just don't. Uh, they do not believe in you succeeding. Women will always choose a guy who has a secure income or has, you know, a big income from a venture that was originally insecure that is now secure, right? Because now that she's, now the guy's, he's got clients, he's making tons of money for all intents and purposes. It's very secure. I found that women over and over again would be very uncomfortable when I started new ventures. Now, and, 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 and women would say, yeah, sure, of course we are. You know, we don't, we don't, women want security. Uh, okay, fine. From the woman's perspective has been analyzed a million times. But I'm talking about, I'm talking about now about happiness, single people, and, and, and anonymity, uh, autonomy, ability to, to, to guide your own, you know, boat to where you want to go. Now, now the thing is, I, I always thought when women would not believe in me, when I started a new business, I've always thought like, 
I don't know, it always disappointed me because it was like time and time again, no matter what the girl was like, she could be a model, she could be she could be super beautiful, she could be young, she could be old. It didn't matter. It really didn't matter. Uh, it, it was the same reaction. When I started a company, they were like, the only exceptions were married women who didn't, who I think they liked the fact that I was this crazy entrepreneur trying new things. You know, married women seemed to be cool with it in general. But there were some that were planning on marrying me and divorcing their husbands, and those ones didn't like it. So it was actually a pretty good barometer for if they wanted to stay with me long term, whether they cared. Uh, but struggling and starting a company, it's not fun. It's not easy. It's really difficult, okay? It's very difficult, especially if you don't take funding, because I've always done it in Asia. So I never had any hand job money. There was no small business organization to help me. There was never any help. There was never any free this or free that. I had to do it all myself. And I find this to be incredibly uh, enriching to my life. And, and almost, I consider it essential in my life. And the reason why I was so disappointed in women, I was so disappointed, is because there's a lot of reasons. One of them was that I was successful so many times. So every venture, I started so many ventures, and I was successful a very high percentage of those ventures. Because I know for a fact that 9 out of 10 businesses fail in the first five years. And 9 out of those, 10 of those businesses fail in the next five years. And the fact that I had so many successful companies, any person with a brain, okay, this is how I felt. This is how I felt. Any person with a fucking brain would say, this guy is a successful guy. And now he's doing something new and, you know, he might fail this one, but he's going to succeed. This guy is, this guy is a proven, he's going to succeed. Like I, if I was a woman, I would say, I'm going to support this guy, even though my gut doesn't like it. You know, maybe women's gut is like the, the, the lack of security. And it could be something evolutionary, you know, like not like a fault in women. It could be something that they can't even explain themselves. But still, logic has to override certain things, right? You know, it's like when you're driving backwards, right? Your brain wants to turn the wheel one way, but you have to turn it the opposite way in order to park your car without crashing into things, right? So you need to override this sometimes. And I was kind of, I was disappointed that I didn't see that in more women. And and let's face it, it, it one of the biggest problems with success, okay, the one of the biggest problems is that when once you're successful and you have power and you have money, then you get what's called fair weathered friends. So basically, suddenly a lot of people want to hang out with you. Okay, they want to be your friend. They want to hang out. They want to do this. They want to do that, right? And they want to do business together. They want to do this because they see that you have something to offer them. Now, everybody who's been successful knows that pretty much your biggest enemy is these fair-weathered friends. They, they are only the people with the lowest self-esteem will choose these people. And, and even if they know, you know, once they know these people don't really care about them, they're just going to, if, 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 if you don't keep succeeding, they're just going to go on to somebody else. Or if they find somebody who's more successful, they're going to hang out with them, right? They don't care about you. They only care about your success. So Anybody who's had a business who's failed, anybody who went through the depression, anybody who uh, had a health problem, you realize that fake friends and fair-weathered friends are pretty much one of the most dangerous things in your life. Because, you know, if you don't know that they're, they're not really, don't care about you, then when you do have hard times, that's the time when you really need friends, right? That's when you need love. That's when you need support. That's when you need belief that's when you need all this stuff and you might even need financial help right because you, you know you when you're really down right uh, or health problem or whatever so so that you you want to avoid this at all costs and i've noticed this i've seen this a million times is that people especially people that are successful one time and they get a bunch of friends and they believe they're all friends they fail say the say the company goes bankrupt all those people leave. That teaches an entrepreneur one of the best lessons. And the next time when they succeed, they're very careful about who they allow into their inner circle because they know there's so many people who just glom onto you as soon as you're successful. And they just, they'll just leave you. And they leave you at the worst time. And it's, it's a very depressing thing. Like, and also, like just 
like like just your time wise you know you don't want to invest time in people that don't care about you right you want to you want to spend your time with people who care about you you want to be wise with your friends you want to be wise with your money you don't want to be a fool okay that's the other thing like you want to you want to keep learning right you're just like improving you're an improving machine right if you made a big mistake okay suck it up learn the lessons and move to the next and that's what happens to entrepreneurs so so this is one of the biggest lessons everybody knows this okay everybody wants to be donald trump's friend everybody wants to be elon musk's friend everybody wants to be uh, a very successful leader or businessman uh, friend you know uh, prime minister abe has a lot of friends in japan right now because he's powerful right he he can give people something right now when he goes out you're gonna see all his friends are gonna you know what I mean? Like, it's like, okay, what happened to Hillary Clinton's friends when she got out of politics, right? She doesn't have as many friends. I don't see as many articles about her writing about good things about her. Why? Because they're fair-weathered friends. They don't care, right? So you want to avoid that, right? The problem is, <laughs> is that really women are like this with men. And it's a very fucking bitter pill to swallow. Because when I succeed, like I'll start a business and a girl will kind of like not be into it. She won't believe in it. And I, I can tell you one specific, like uh, in a name that nobody can track down to who it was. Uh, there was a girl I was dating. Her name was Kauri. And she was a very uh, vivacious fucking, she was a basketball player. She had like surgeries on her knees because she was so into it. She was fun. She was funny. She was a great fuck. She was awesome. Cowrie was a great girlfriend, and uh, when I was uh, when I was making money, I was successful, very successful as a uh, teaching English when I first got to Japan. I I wasn't an employee. I had like a lot of different. I was like a freelancer. I taught at colleges, high schools. I had kind of put together this piecemeal all these great high paying jobs. Now I did a lot of travel, and I had a motorcycle so I could get around. But the income was great, and it, it was just like it was awesome. The cash came in every month. I had money to burn, really. And it was probably, I think, you know, it, when you go back to the happiness is, is 95% of $60,000 a year, you know, I was making a lot more than that. Uh, but it was like there was so much happiness because I just had no stress. And every month there was just a pile of cash every month and I would just send it home and I would invest in stocks. You know, I, I was feeling good about myself. I had no stress. There was always cash laying around the house. There was always cash in the bank. You know, I remember one time my, my wallet got stolen. Uh, my bag got stolen with my wallet in it. And I lost, I think, uh, three $3,000. Uh, just boom. And I was like, usually that would have been a bummer. But at that time, it was like, I just went to the bank and got some more money out. You know, <laughs> it's like, whatever. It's like, I shouldn't carry that much in my wallet, especially at the beach. Right? So, and having a very cool bag that somebody wanted the bag. They didn't even know there was money inside. It was in Japan where nobody steals anything, but I had the coolest, newest bag from O'Neill with like a wetsuit little thing. And somebody thought the bag was cool. They took the bag, ended up with my wallet, right? And my bank cards and fuck all this stuff that was difficult to, re to, to uh, replace. Um, but so, so the thing is, is, is uh, happiness is, is like, I, I'm not... I'm not happy when I realize my friends don't care about me, right? You know, the, the, like just recently in my life, I, I had a realization about some friends when I had a difficult time, you know, and I, and I realized like they were not reaching out. They were not supporting me. Like I was like, whoa, I thought these were good friends. I like, fuck, you know, like, oh my gosh. Okay. And, and it's not a lesson I like to learn. I don't, I don't revel in this. It's, it's very painful actually for me because I'm, I'm an empathic person. So this this kind of stuff hits me right in the gut, right? So I try to I try to avoid it as much as I can, right? But women are just like this, you know. It's just like it's something I've just kind of because I've had so many chances to see this because I it's it, when you start one company and you have one woman, you only learn so much. But when you start like ten companies like me over your life and you have like hundreds of women, you get to see a lot more. And I I saw into the soul into the hearts of women when it comes to entrepreneurs and women don't like entrepreneurs new entrepreneurs they don't like them they will not go with them and and, and they will swear that they do 
And, oh, yeah. Oh, here's another great example. Fuck this great example. It's not me. It's a friend of mine. He started, he, some investors contacted him and wanted him to start a company. And they had $80 million. It was a, it was a, it's a brick and mortar company. And so the investors contacted him. He was a vice president of another uh, chain of stores. And they said, look, we want you to start this new company. And here's, here's, here's our cash to start. We want you to be president. You know, we want you to do what you're doing and take it big, right? And this was for him chance of a lifetime because he had the chance to use his best ideas and they were very cutting edge too at the time and, 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 and to really roll them out without anybody interrupting him. He's the leader. He's got the investors, but I mean like it was that kind of business. He needed investors. So he had as much freedom as possible, right? And, and, and he took the job. And when he took the job, he had to move to a new city. His wife did not support him. Now, I know this family since I was a kid, okay? And she did not go to his new city. And even though they had $80 million in investment, I remember she did not fucking believe in it. She was, he was a vice president. They had a nice car. They had a house on the hill. Why are you taking this risk? Why are you doing this? You know, I don't know the discussions that happened at home, but I know for a fact that she did not support him and only moved up to the city after the company became successful. And I mean, if it was me, I would have fucking divorced her. I, I would have divorced her because they were successful already. They, it was a huge amount of investment. And and in fact, the guy was a successful guy. Like she did not have the intelligence to judge this man and to judge the business situation. Just any risk and she was scared to death, right? That is not the kind of person I want around me. I don't want that. I want an intelligent person who can look at me. Maybe they feel risk and they feel like, shit, this is risky. But they look at me and they're intelligent enough to say, wait, look at this guy's track record. Look at this guy's focus and look at the business that he's starting. Look at the specifics of the type of business that he's starting, right? And, and the direction that he's heading. Is this a new technology? Is this a growing technology? You know, and, and it is, is, you know, whatever it is, whatever the top, but in, 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 in all of these cases I'm talking about, it was going on to some new thing that was, that was growing, you know, and you know, even with Ronin Man Channel, right? YouTube YouTubers are becoming more and more influential in the world. Uh, television stations are becoming less influential. Blogs, less people read blogs. More people read video, yeah, watch video. Video is becoming very powerful. And influencers are either video stars or Instagram stars. And this is creating a whole new uh, paradigm, you know. So, so when I chose... And my other businesses are all in line. Uh, when I chose to go down that road, I could see that long term, this was a good direction to go. And it was something that I'm good at. And it was something like, I'm like, this is going to succeed. Like, I have a lot to share inside me. It's locked inside my fucking mind. And I wanted to share it with other people. And so that's why I started, uh, you know, I started uh, making videos uh, long before Ronin Man. With other, I have, I have five video channels, YouTube channels. And so I started to see that I saw the future in that. And I tell you this, nobody, and I can even say this, like nobody around me believed in me. Now, this is why single guys are happier. This right here, this fucking shit is serious. Because I, ha I saw something. I had a dream. I saw my own, I correctly analyzed my own skills. I looked at the market. I looked at what I was doing. I, and I wanted to have something where I wasn't stuck in a certain location with certain neighbors. You know, I wanted to have some freedom. And I saw that I could do this. I'm like, fuck, I can do this. And I, and I proved it to myself. And I started doing it. But people still didn't believe in me. And, 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 I, and that's okay. Now, here's the point. Here's the fucking point of all that. The point is, is that as a single person, you have the option. You have the option to do the thing that you truly believe in. You have, you, you don't have to make 
another person happy. And this is why single people are happier. This is the main reason, is because single people have the ability to choose important, you know, like the, the concept is often that single people are selfish, like I said, and they're short, short-sighted and they have bad people skills. The exact opposite came out in the research, is that short, single people choose the wiser, the thing that they know is true, the thing that they know they want. And married people choose the short. They choose, I got to make money now. I have to have health insurance now. I have to have this now. And they bypass the thing that they know long term is better and the thing that, that fulfills them. Because in the end, when you, are, when you really are fulfilled with something, there is, and I know a lot of people disagree with this. I have definitely found this in my case. I, I, I tell you right now, if I believe in something, I end up being successful in it. And if I don't, I just won't. I just, I just, I'm just, i not interested. Like, if I'm not into something, I, I can't fucking fake it. You know, this video right now, I'm fucking, it's been burning in my soul. I made a video yesterday, hour and a half long, and I lost the audio. So I had to remake it. And this new one is completely different. And it's because my soul got stirred from yesterday's conversation. And it started to make me think about all these important things I'm talking about. And I and, and and this is why this is why I don't want anybody to control me. It's not because I'm a rebel. It's not because I uh, am selfish. It's not because uh, I can't get along with people. The reason why is because I I know myself the best, and I know and and, and, I, and I change all the time too I'm, I'm a not a static person I'm learning all the time I'm a learning and growing machine and as I age as technology changes I see new opportunities and only I can, I have to see them and I have to fucking grab them I have to invest in them and I have to correctly analyze my own abilities okay whether it's to, to do something or to raise money or whatever it is people skills whatever it is i have to correctly analyze myself to see if i could do that and if i want to do that and when i do that it's very very fulfilling for me to have success in that it's incredibly fulfilling and that fulfillment leads to real success for me and that's why I've had so many successful projects because I follow that yearning in my heart. I follow that and I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I correctly analyze. I think what's missing when you see the descriptions of people online who say follow your heart is bullshit is because those people don't have good analytical skills. You need both. You need to know what you want to do, but you also have to know the technology. You have to be up to date on what's really going on, how it's going to affect you. And you have to know your deep skills. You can't be kidding yourself like, oh, I'm good with people. But you're actually not good with people. And I'm going to raise money. Why do you think you're going to fucking raise money, right? What gave you that idea, right? When I make a decision, I've thought about it. I've looked at myself. I've analyzed myself at the, mac at the fucking microcosm, like deepest level, DNA level. And I say, okay, I can do this. I'm good at this, I have fucking skills in this. And this is growing, and it's fucking fulfilling, and I can see myself in five years getting up and being dying to, to keep doing this. And so I know that is a fucking winner. And I, it's very important for me at that stage to not listen to anybody, because that's gonna be their experience, that's gonna be their understanding. And I, I have to like grab onto that and, and, and trust myself and go and do it. And then when I do that, it's fucking successful. And then people say, well, how did you know? It's like a very fucking subtle process. But the thing is, when you're married, that shit ain't possible. That shit ain't possible. Because I'm telling you right now, women do not believe in, the, in you. They only believe after you succeed. So if that's a good enough for you, if, you, if, you, if you're going to go out there and you're going to start a company, and you're gonna put your balls on the fucking line, and you're gonna grit, and you're gonna you're gonna fucking lose the sleep and do the whatever it takes. And I'm telling you, there's some fucking stories I could tell you about starting companies, uh, which are very hardcore. 
uh, you know, uh, many of them uh, borderline. <laughs> Extreme cases where I did what it took to succeed. And the thing is, are you willing to do that on your own? And then after you're successful, let somebody join you, okay, a woman, move in with you, marry you, who didn't believe in you during that period. Like, is that is that fulfilling for you? Basically a fair-weathered friend. And, and knowing that that is what she is. And it's very obvious that, you know, because she wasn't there and didn't believe in you. And I don't mean believe in you for five minutes, okay? I'm talking about fucking believing in you. Just like you believe in, in, in a child or you believe the sun's going to come up, you know, it's like you fucking believe in something and it's not like a, it's not a temporary thing, right? It's like, you're like, we're going to do this fucking thing somehow. I'm moving to fucking Japan. Like, that's it. I'm moving to Japan. I'm moving to China. I'm starting a company. No one's going to fucking stop me, right? I'm going to fucking do it. And that's my attitude. And I go do shit like that all the time. And if, if a woman does not have that same belief in me, and I have never found a woman who has had that kind of belief in me. Actually, I shouldn't say never. No, I'm not going to say never. I know two women, actually. Yep, yep. I know two women, actually, who were like this, who believed in me at the very... They believed in my judgment. They believed in my character. Uh, and for whatever reason... They were there through the hard times. So yeah, I take that back. And I'm actually sorry about that. Because cause it matters. It matters. If somebody it, that breaks... You know what I mean? This podcast is not about being right. It's not about getting you guys pumped up. It's about truth. It's about granular truth of in a complex world. So that you can make your life the way you fucking want it to be. Right? And and succeed in the way that you feel is important. And that, that is what we find with single people. Single people are able to forego the short term of higher salary and they're able to go for the long term and say, hey, fuck, I really want to do this. I'm going to do this. And single people have that capacity and, and, it, and it really matters. And there's a lot of other reasons why single people are happier according to the research. Uh, one of the things that they found, uh, another very interesting finding uh, from Bella DePaulo was that solitude is a very important thing for people and that single people have the capacity. They, they can hang out with as many people as they want, but when they want to be alone, they don't have to worry about somebody else, uh, you know, just like not being happy with them. Giving them the stink eye, like, are you ignoring me? You know, it's not. They, 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 they need solitude, and they can go and, and, and single people can say, hey, I decide to get to be alone for now. And I can tell you this: I put myself into a cave with no windows for a few months before I came up with the idea for the Ronin Man channel. I went into my cave. I went into my solitude. I ignored everything. I didn't even leave my house usually until two in the afternoon, and I wake up early. And I just sat there and I wrote and I thought and, I, and I, I considered myself like an aesthetic in the desert. The monks that lived in caves in the desert uh, in, 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 in the Middle Ages. You know, I was like one of these guys who was like thinking, planning. What is it that I want to do with my life? I was in a turning point and I needed that solitude in time in order to come up with something that I really cared about. And that's working with guys, helping guys. I really fucking care about this. This is something I can wake up every single day and do. And it's partly because I like people. Like, I like to help people. You know, I like women. I like to help women. I mean, it's fine. But I see guys as needing more right now. I really do. And I, can, and I, and I have a lot of experience that is very unique. And so I feel like I'm, I, I think I'm a unique, unique voice. And I wanted that to get out there. And, and to give men options they never uh, heard of. And, 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 and viewpoints that they never considered. And to deconstruct arguments that I saw as being presented in a wrong way. And, 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 to, and then also the, the benefit is seeing the fulfillment of guys that, that their lives change. And, they, they, and it's just like amazing to me. Like at this point, I, I, there's no question I chose the right path. I mean, there's no, there's no fucking debate anymore. I feel very motivated. And and my life has really changed. And even my 
mental state. I, I really have learned and grown a lot as a person uh, since I started this channel. Like it's really been super beneficial for me. And I, 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 it seems like beneficial for other guys too. So it's like, it's really win-win. So, but that came from solitude. I can tell you right now, and this is guaranteed, and it would be the same for women. Women, in fact, okay, here was the really interesting. Well, first I'll say women also have needs, wants, and desires that they need solitude. They need time alone. They need, they need, uh, they have their dreams. You know, it's all the same stuff. It's like having a roommate you can never get rid of, right? You know, it, your roommate in college is great. You drink beer, you're in the fraternity together, or you're like both construction workers and you guys have the same schedule, or you have different schedules. You work nights, they work days. You know, roommates can be great. I love roommates. I love people. But do you really want a permanent roommate? Like, is the same guy that you were drinking beer with in college and picking up chicks, is that the same guy you want to live with when you're starting a, a company in Silicon Valley? Probably not, right? Probably fucking, he's going to be smoking weed. He's going to be, you know, playing loud music. And you're going to be like totally focused on like, you know, some new algorithm or something or programming or whatever, you know, so your needs change, your sit, you change. And because of that, one roommate is not one, one size fits all. That's what marriage is. It's like one person. So it's not even that women are good or women are bad or men are good or men are bad or men are smelly or women are dirty whatever it's none of that it's just the fact that you change and you need solitude and you need control of your life to really reach happiness that's where happiness comes from happiness doesn't come from extra money it doesn't come from a government tax break happiness doesn't come from society telling you that you're great happiness comes from inside you happiness comes from fulfilling your desires from growing from doing things that you didn't think you could do from doing things you knew you could do and that you almost didn't do from creating things out of nowhere from all kinds of things that are very spiritual really they're very deep and very spiritual and that's why being single is a kind of a, a, a way to be happy the best way to be happy being married is is a, is, a, is a second best as far as happiness and this is another thing Bella came up with which was super surprising is that married people are not as healthy as single people it has been total bullshit because the difference with Bella did she studied people that were married and got divorced and that's a big percentage of marriages the studies until now that have studied married people and health have only studied people that stayed together. They didn't study, and even those were not that clear. There wasn't, there wasn't that much data. It wasn't as rosy as they were pos they were posting it. And when you include unhappy marriages, the difference in health is huge, because in unhealthy marriages and even in marriages in general, especially men tend to do if they have a vice and this is the research okay if guys have a vice let's say they smoke let's say they drink let's say they gamble they tend to do it more when they're married that's that that is like statistically accurate single guys they gamble less drink less smoke less if they smoke drink and gamble and i guess it would be probably because they're a little bit unhappy maybe because they need to get their mind off things i don't know what that would be the reason but you see health effects from all these things and you also see financial health effects from all these things and mental health effects, right? And you would see that in friendships and interpersonal relationships. So here's the last thing, and this is like really heavy, is the one of the beliefs that marriage was gonna make people happier and why you should say no to your girlfriend. Basically, you should diss her, okay? And why that's the best thing you can do for a woman is because of the need for humans to have interconnected friendships and a variety of personal relations, like a network of friends, a network of people, a network of people that care about them, love them, support them, people to talk to, people to roll ideas off. That is the most important thing in every study of happiness, okay? And, and also, it goes even past happiness, actually, come to think of it. It all go, also goes to health. People live longer when they have a large social network uh, or, or a social network that fits them, right? That makes them happy. And 
they even even if they have high blood pressure and diabetes and then the other the, the single person that doesn't or sorry not the single sorry the person without the big network uh the married person in this case without the big network uh can have less physical problems but die younger than the person with that rich network of caring people now who has more in marriages the idea you probably believe this yourself is that having somebody that loves you uh, actually made you happy, right? Is that 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 would be you know high up, right? Right in 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 fulfilling relationships, don't you think that in your mind, like logically, it makes sense, right? A woman cares about you. that man. That means a lot. Right? And a woman thinks, well, if a guy's there, he cares about me. That would mean a lot. And if, especially if I got very sick. Okay, the research did not prove this to be true. In fact. Married people have less friends. They spend less time with their colleagues. They don't know their neighbors as well. And these are, these are, this is 800 academic studies where they're asking people, did your neighbor, what kind of job does he have? How often do you meet him? You know, and single people get around more. They have a larger group of friends. They know their neighbors. They know that they, they have, they spend more time with their parents, single people. That's another thing they found. When, when elderly parents need help, the married people do not are not the ones statistically who do the help. It's the single ones. The single ones are able to give back to their parents. So single people give back more. They give more to charity. They volunteer more, okay, to things that they want to volunteer for. By definition, they don't have a. There's no one there to tell them what to do. They're obviously choosing this on their own, right? Right or wrong, they're making their own choice and they're donating time and money to charities. Single people do more of that. They help their parents more. And this network is, is, is uh, there's no way to analyze this stuff, but this, this group of friends, as opposed to one friend, married people become more isolated. And that's basically what the final result is, is that single people, maybe because they're single, maybe because they, people talk to them more, maybe because they have more time, whatever the reason is, they have more friends, they have a network of people, not one big friend, one big lover that's supposed to solve all fucking problems. And I can tell you this, when I traveled around the world, when I was, when I was young, I went around the world for 13 months and I saw a lot of couples that also traveled at the time and singles. And I can tell you this right away. I noticed that nobody talks to married couples. They don't. I'm telling you the fucking truth. I, I watched this over 13 months. There'd be couples together traveling, right? And they would be like a closed uh, circuit board. And, and the locals, wherever they we were, I traveled all over the third world. I went to 50 countries. Uh, wherever we went, the locals would avoid those couples because they knew it's like a private thing like that it's like a private i don't know whatever the reason is but I, I i watch and they would come up to me they would say hey where are you going you know what are you doing you know we got this restaurant we got this we got a wedding where you want to come to you know people invited me to all kinds of stuff i met people i did things and i realized that regardless of the couple because a lot of the couples they wanted to interact with people more you know they were they also get lonely right but the locals would not talk to them. And, and they, 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 I guess they didn't feel invited or whatever, you know? Like, people don't talk to couples. Couples at restaurants, they just sit there. Whereas single people, people tend to say, hey, you gonna, can I sit here? You know, oh, what are you reading? Oh, yeah, Clinton did that. Or, you know, Obama did. You know, people start talking, right, with single people. And even the donut girl, you know, she'll talk to a single guy. Whereas if she sees he's with his wife little bit more cautious right even if it's not a romantic thing it's just there's so many reasons why people don't talk to married people but i found this in 54 years on this planet i have watched this a million times is that people that travel especially are much more lonely when they have a couple when they are in a couple and single people tend to make many more friends and those friends are not just temporary i want to tell you this from my own experience Okay, so you're probably thinking, oh yeah, talk about Clinton, talk about the newspaper, talk about the weather. What does that mean? Okay, theoretically, it doesn't mean anything. Let's look at reality. Reality is, I travel around the world. My brother, six months later, traveled around the world too. After I got, after I got to Japan, my brother decided he's going to do it too. My whole family started traveling after I did it. They were like, holy crap, 
You know, Rona went around the world for over a year. He supported himself. He had a great time. He has insane fucking pictures and memories. We want to do that too. So my family started traveling all over the place. And uh, it was pretty funny. I never said anything, but they copied me. <laughs> Which is good. That's what I want. I want to I want to create I want to create new things, find new things. I want to be the one who has the balls to go out there and do it. And then and then and then if that's beneficial, I want all kinds of people to do it too, including you. You know, if there's something I have to benefit offer you cuz I learned the hard way, fucking hey, that's awesome. That is so awesome. Makes me feel so good. And 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 it has benefit to me too because my parents are very international now. They're in Japan right now. You know, they travel all the time. And they see all kinds of places. And that, that benefits me in many ways because they're not these like local people who are just like in one mindset, right? They, they have a more broad mindset. They understand me better than they would uh, if they had never traveled. Guaranteed, guaranteed. There's benefit there. So, so you, in times of trouble, okay, so let's, let's say another benefit. The last thing I'm going to end on is... One of the big assumptions about being married, and I did an episode on this, like dying alone, and it was a pretty funny episode. Uh, you should watch it. It's hilarious, actually. Uh, it was my favorite one. I'm laughing my butt off on that one. It was so fun to make, and I thought it was very uh, – it, it hit some points, too. So it, 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 it's one of my best. It, I, I like that one so much I've actually listened to it a few times myself. I try not to listen to my podcast because, I don't know – it's hard to listen to your own voice, but that one I can. I just I laugh and I listen and I start cracking up every time. <laughs> you know, it's just fucking. It's such a stupid idea. Like I just tear it apart. But the idea is that if you're married, okay, you're gonna have a stroke. You're gonna have a diabetic seizure. You're going to fall down and break your leg. You're gonna need help. You're gonna have cancer. You're gonna have something where. You really want that one person to be there. You know, not just a bunch of friends who are busy. You want one person who can help you and, and can care about you and notice the progression of your disease and the progression of your recovery and all those kind of deep things that happen when you have a serious illness, right? Well, the research isn't good there either. And this is unbelievable. And nobody knows why. And, and, and they did the, the studies of women with breast cancer, okay? Women with breast cancer who had uh, a loving partner and they got breast cancer, they asked them, they did in-depth studies of how did you feel, how did, you know, because the, 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 the assumption was is that having a partner was like super valuable. And I'm talking in a good marriage, okay? I'm talking about couples that were happy together, not divorced couples who are going back to their ex with, 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 with breast cancer. I'm talking about people together quote unquote happily married people the women said that and no one knows why that their their loving partner basically who is with them and gave them no support or they felt they felt no decrease of distress essentially that partner that loved them did not make them any it did not lift their mood it did not make it easier. It did not make them happier. It had no effect. This was the most damning thing I saw in, in Bella's research. Is that a woman with breast cancer, you know, we're, you're facing death for the first time, basically, right? And you would think, probably right now, you're probably like, what the fuck? Like, really? How is that possible? Well, find out. Be the researcher that finds out. That's how, that's how research is done. It's done when you see something that surprises you and the results come out the way you didn't think they would. And then you start to look for how is that possible? One, you could go back and reanalyze the results and see if those 800 studies were accurate and the breast cancer people were honest. And I would guess they would be. I can't think of any reason why they wouldn't be in a time like that. But for whatever reason, women felt no, la no, no lessening of distress due to having a married uh, partner, a loving married partner. So even in times of serious distress, uh, women, and this was the, this part was about women. They did not feel any better from having a loving partner. So there was no benefit and there was a lot of negatives because with 
okay, just imagine it's not a married couple. Ma- imagine it's not a it's not a wife. It's not a husband. It's a roommate. Having the same roommate for decades, it just limits you because you you have like a it's one of the same reasons why you want to get out of your family house is because you know you're you change over time right you 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 change your clothes you change your image you 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 might start lifting weights and being from a guy who is like a poet and never lifted weights to a guy who becomes quite intimidating physically right you you might suddenly change of what you want to do with your life and and what you want to, what what is important to you and and it's it's more difficult when you have a roommate or when you have a family or when you have a a married couple to to change like that because they see you in a certain way. It's it's much easier anytime, and this is a basic rule of of personal change. And I I I, I can tell you my own experience. When I wanted to pick up a lot of women in my twenties, when I wanted to sleep with a lot of women. And really, I wanted to, I really wanted to taste the juice and the life energy of a lot of different people. And I wanted to, I think I wanted to uh, spread my seed to the world. I also wanted to drink in the juice of other humans and, and of different ways of thinking and living and licking and kissing and, and loving and, and, and laughing and eating and everything. I wanted to see it all. I wanted to feel it all. I, it, this was why. This is why. You say, why did you do it? Was it an ego? No. I wanted to see everything so I could choose what was the best way for me? What made the most sense for me? What was the type of girl that really made me excited? And, and, and I, I learned this many times over because I had a certain type of girl I liked in the beginning and I had a very different type of girl I liked in the end because now I had really experienced it. It wasn't just theoretical. This is one advantage I have over a lot of MGTOWs is they don't really have that much experience with women. So it's very difficult for them to say anything good about women if they haven't had any good experience. I've had a lot of experiences, both good and bad, and I can I can draw on that with a more subtle uh, uh, analysis of the reality of relationships, right? Or people, you know, and, and women and men and myself. Right, so that experience is something I wanted to share. So I wanted to see more, and it's just difficult when you have one. Like I remember, like I I I, I took off from the states, and a lot of the reasons why I didn't go back is because I was changing, and I was now because my friends back home were a lot of them were very serious Christians, and they did not approve of me dating and having sex with girls that weren't married. Really, they this was we were all young. They had strict ideas about the way things were and that I did not feel that way I felt like it was me being a positive force in the world and making these girls laugh and enjoying their company and 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 you know somewhat entertaining them and everything that you do when you have a fun time with somebody I felt like there was a lot of value in that I didn't feel like I was hurting anybody I don't feel like they hurt me by being with me I felt like we all benefited in many, many ways. And I, even to this day, even to this day, and this is what most MGTOWs would never say, is I have many gems of wisdom and, 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 and laughter that I receive from women, from many different good women, and, and from good times with women, whether they were good or not, with good times also, good experiences, human experiences that I would have had with men, right, if I would have been gay, I would have had probably similar experiences, right? But either way, it was other human beings. It was loving, laughing, living, challenging, traveling. It was all this beautiful canicopia or what is it, cornucopia of life, you know? And 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 so I got that. And but my friends back home, they didn't see it in the same way. They basically saw anybody who dated a lot of women as a bad person, breaking the rules of God, going to hell. They pictured hell. They pictured uh, only the only way you could date a lot of people is if you used them, if you lied to them, right? That was their paradigm, and that was not my paradigm. I, I had a much more honest. I the girls knew, they knew I had all these girlfriends, right? Sometimes we do threesomes. I mean, they knew. It wasn't like there wasn't a lot of. It wasn't like they thought. I was able to be myself and be honest and 
and to really enjoy and, and, and drink in different ways of living and thinking and loving and feeling and eating and everything. And so what I had to do, the point is, is that I had to get away from those guys because it wasn't that I didn't like them. They were good friends and they are good friends today. But I, I couldn't be around them like a roommate. I couldn't be around them because they didn't allow me to grow. I, 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 and it's not their fault. It's, it's, it's me. I can't change if everybody's, you know, kind of thinks of me the same way. I need to kind of, for myself, and I think this is definitely the case with anybody. If you're trying something new, if you're, if you're going from, let's say, a very gregarious person to say you're going to become a programmer who's going to work alone, or you're going to start writing poetry, you're going to write a book, you're going to start a whole new business, you're going to, you're going to change yourself into a whole new lifestyle, you're going from a, a drinker to somebody who gets sober, it's very important to take a break from those drinking friends. Because those drinking friends, they see you a certain way and they have certain lifestyles, and you will be very vulnerable to their drinking. It's not their fault. But so what you need to do is take a break. And then when you're, when you're sure in yourself, when your personality is set, when you know who you are and you've adapted and you've integrated this new self into your new self, then it's safe to go back to the friends that were good. And some friends won't be, uh, you won't want to go back to some people, but other people you will. But you just couldn't be with them in that transition period. That's what I'm saying. And this is exactly what happens uh, with a wife that makes it, that, that it seems like it wouldn't be a big deal. And it would be the same with a husband for women. This is not, this part is not gender specific at all. Is that people have ideas about you and people, you know, I mean, it's just difficult, right? To change, right? I mean, there's so many reasons, like she might not even want you to get in shape, you know, because she might think you're going to be more attractive to other women. There might be, she might even like not want you to get better, right? And you might not want her to get a boob job or whatever it is that she wants to do, right? You know, you might not be a fan of what it is that she wants to do and it might make you uh, jealous or insecure, right? And, and you have the right to that feeling, but she has the right to want what she wants. And this is what marriage stops people from doing is they're not able to go and do those things they want to do, they believe in. And it's like the subtle uh, enmeshment it's called enmeshment in relationships. And, and that enmeshment, it makes it very difficult for you to change. So this is the final reason why marriage is not a great idea and why happiness does not come from marriage. And in fact, single people are statistically healthier. They don't, you know, they don't drink as much. They don't do as much drug. They don't gamble as much. Uh, they sleep more. And also, they are happier, even if even if they don't have as much money. And that's amazing. So don't be afraid of being single, guys. Because I think this is a fear of a lot of MGTOWs. They're like, shit, what am I going to do? And a lot of guys, they start reading in the future. Oh, what if I have a bunch of sex with women? That's going to be bad because my I'm religious. Don't, you, you don't need to have sex with a lot of women. There's no reason. If you want to, you do something, right? You are now seeing a different uh, paradigm of life. You're seeing a different landscape. Don't jump to conclusions about where this is going to lead. Follow your heart on this one and, and, and allow yourself to change. And don't worry. It's going to work out. You can always go back. That's the truth about change is you can always go back. You know, if you want to move back to your hometown, you can move back, right? You know, it's like, don't be afraid of change. Embrace change. When you're ready for change, embrace it and move forward fearless about what this will mean. Because in the end, if you keep moving forward in the direction of things that matter to you, is that you will be happier and you will be more successful, both in your, I believe in your career, because success is not all about money. I've had times when I'm making more money and I, and, and I, I, I don't have any problem with those times. Those were good times, okay, don't get me wrong. I was very lucky. But I, I wouldn't trade that lifestyle for my lifestyle today. I really like the way I'm living. I really like what I'm doing. So, and I'm a different person than I was in my 30s. So all things being said is don't be afraid to change. Allow yourself to change. And this is the reason why single people are happier. 
So if you want to do your girlfriend a huge favor is don't marry her because women are even more affected when it comes to happiness than men, according to the research. This is the final thing. And is that men tend to be avoiding of marriage, but once they get in marriage, they're like, eh, this is okay. It's better than I thought. Women are the opposite. They think they're going to be super happy, and then they get in marriage and they realize that they're not happy. And what, what people tend to do when they're not happy, when they're married, they tend to blame it on the guy, they're, the person they're with, right? He's not doing this. He smells. He does this. But the reality is, is they might be just purely happy or single. It's not even anybody's fault. It's their fault for not knowing that. So if your girlfriend doesn't know that and you are wise and you do study happiness and you do study things, you'll realize that she wants to get married. Women want to get married. They have a deep desire to get married. But once they get married, they don't want to be married. That's the, that's the thing. So you're kind of helping her out here by saying, okay, I won't marry you because I know it's going to make you happy. Don't tell her that. Okay. Obviously she's not going to believe you, but if you know that to be true, okay, if what I'm saying makes sense and if the research you read makes sense, you are doing her a favor by not marrying her. She will find a better life. She will have a bigger network of friends and she will be able to be herself and make her own decisions and choose things that are important for her and work that's fulfilling and going to vacations where she feels the most fulfilled and watching the movies that she feels will lead her in the direction that she wants to go in. So you're actually not only doing yourself a favor by staying single, but you're doing her a favor too. And there's nothing stopping her from getting pregnant from some guy and having a kid. It's, it's not like you can't have a kid without being married, you know? So there is no argument. Like, it's like, if you, I guess if you want to get married, you know, go ahead. But the research has shown that you're not as happy if you're, if you're okay with that. And you know, if you have a different paradigm than, than uh, Bella or myself or this research, or if you see things differently, go for it. You know, fucking, you know what I mean? Don't fucking listen to me. Don't listen to her. Don't listen to research. You know, if you see that you're different, you know, there, there was a guy, I like to use this as the best exception I've ever heard. There was a guy in the Guinness Book of World Record who could digest aluminum. His body somehow was capable of digesting aluminum and he ate and he ate an airplane basically over the years he cut it up in pieces and he digested it in the guinness book they looked in his shit and everything no aluminum coming out he actually had the capacity so people are very different so if you have a very different outlook on things and you and you see that for yourself it's very different that having one person would make you happy and you know that then go with that you know what i mean but don't blame other people if they don't you know if you see, if you can digest aluminum, you know, and, and get some kind of minerals from it, I mean, that's awesome. You know, that, that's the beauty in life, actually, is that we're all so different, is that we are different. We are very fucking different. And that's what, that's the very reason why I wanted to be with so many women. I wanted to experience that difference. I wanted to integrate these differences into myself and compare them to what I was doing and make my life richer. And I believe it did. I believe it did make my life a lot richer. It's not the way I want to live now, but I believe that it greatly enhanced my viewpoint, my wisdom, my life, and and that it led me to make better choices for myself and just to be happier, you know, in general. Just knowing more makes me happy too. Just understanding life makes me happy personally. You know, I just enjoying understanding the world. I'm not a happy guy if I don't understand shit. I don't like to be confused. I don't like to be in a world that I don't understand. And I like to keep, uh, I like to keep, I'm like a researcher, basically. I'm a never ending researcher of people and life. And that's what, that's what I love. I, I love that more than money. I can tell you that I love it more than surfing. You know, this is shit that makes me very fulfilled. And I, you'd be hard pressed to find a woman who, who would say, that's great. You know, that you, they, <laughs> they don't care, right? Which is fine, fine. There's going to be, obviously, you could find the rare person who cares about that, but they're not going to care about someone else. Live your life, guys. Live your life. Do your girlfriend a favor and diss her before you go to the altar. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that part's up to you. But uh, anyway, guys, hope you guys have a great uh, day. Uh, this has been a very meaningful episode for me, and I love to hear what you think. If you've listened to this far, I'd love to hear what you think about this because it's a heavy one, and it affects us all. 
All right, guys. Rotoman signing off.